Hello and welcome to Peace Hospitals podcast. Today we delve into the remarkable world of deep brain stimulation and its profound impact on Parkinson's disease. Joining us today, Dr. M. Sandhya, consultant adult and pediatric neurologist, having wide expertise in treating and managing Parkinson's disease. In today's episode, she will uncover the transformative potential of this innovative therapy, offering hope and relief to millions around the world. Dr. Sandhya, thank you for joining us at Pace Hospital's High Tech City. Thank you for inviting me today. I would like to navigate through the varying aspects of deep brain stimulation in Parkinson's disease. Dr. Sandhya, thank you for joining us. Let's understand exactly what is Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disease after Alzheimer's disease. It usually affects the older individuals after the age of 50 years. The average age of onset of Parkinson's disease in India is around 51 years, which is very much younger than the world population. The average age of onset of PD in the world is above 60 years of the age. We also found that the 10% of the Parkinson's disease occur in the young individual that is before 50 years and there have been associated genetic abnormality. It was found that the study from Nimhans observed that 45% of the Parkinson's disease patients in India occurred in younger age group between 22 years to 49 years. So, there is the important role of deep brain stimulation in this age group of patients. What are motor and non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease? The disease is characterized by motor and non-motor symptoms. The non-motor symptoms starts around 10 to 30 years prior to the motor symptoms. The non-motor symptoms are loss of smell, constipation, depression. Sometimes the patient can also present with sleep disturbance, etc. While the motor symptoms are bothersome and it is characterized by shaking or tremor. Initially of one side of the body involving the upper part of the body that is upper extremities followed by lower extremities and later on slowness or bradykinesia, tightness of the limbs or rigidity and later postal instability. Hence, person is unable to do his activity of daily living and he becomes slow at workplace and there is slowness of thought also and he lost his job. What is deep brain stimulation? DBS is a surgical therapy used to treat certain aspects of Parkinson's disease and it helps patient to be asymptomatic most of the day that is 80% of the day the patient becomes on. So doctor what is DBS surgery? The surgery is done in two stages. The first stage is planning and appropriately making the site for electrode insertion. This is done using a stereotactic frame and imaging brain to localize the subthalamic nucleus or the globus pelvis interna. These are the deeper structures of the brain where we are going to introduce the electrode. And this takes, this procedure takes around 3 hours. So what happened in the DBS surgery? A electrode are inserted into a target area of the brain. That is as I have already told the subthalamic nucleus and globus pallidus using MRA brain. And the entire procedure is done in the awake state of the individual and local anesthesia is given at the insertion site of the electrodes. Now coming to the second stage. The second stage is done in the next day after the first day and it is under general anesthesia. And this procedure is performed to implant an impulse generator battery that is it, it is a brain pacemaker which is similar to a heart pacemaker and it is approximately the size of a stopwatch and this is placed under the collarbone or in the abdomen and it delivers an electrical stimulation to the targeted areas in the brain that control movement. Those who undergo DBS surgery are given a controller to turn the device on or off and review basic parameters such as battery life. When is DBS indicated or advised in PD patient? When they have levodopa responsiveness, when the age of the patient is between 30 to 70 years and there is no dementia or there is no memory impairment or no psychosis and then patient is already on medication and he developed drug induced uh, excess movements that is called as dyskinesia or the patient is not able to tolerate the medications and 
there is medication related side effects so these are the indication of dbs can dbs improve non motor symptoms of pd yes dbs may also improve some of the non motor symptoms that include sleep pain and urinary urgency it is important for everyone to keep in mind that dbs can only help relieve symptoms not cure or stop disease progression is dbs an approved treatment in pd yes dbs is the approved treatment in parkinson's disease it was first approved in 1997 to treat parkinson's tremor that is shaking in patients with parkinson's disease in 2002 it was uh, approved to treat advanced parkinson's symptoms advanced parkinson's symptoms usually occurs in those patient after 5 years of onset of motor symptoms in 2016 it was advised for the early stages of pd for people who have pd for at least 4 years and have motor symptoms which are not controlled with medications who will benefit maximum with dbs surgery it is most effective for people who experience disabling tremors wearing of spells and medication induced dyskinesias how long the benefit of dbs lasts study showed that benefit last at least 5 years it depends upon the type of pacemaker and battery used there are two types of battery available non rechargeable and rechargeable battery so in non rechargeable battery it works for 3 to 5 years and battery has to be removed and replaced after doing small incision below the collar bone where the pacemaker was implanted now in case of rechargeable type it can be charged and used even up to 15 years and some devices up to 25 years it is not right choice for every person with parkinson's disease uh, to undergo dbs as certain non motor symptoms like speech swallowing difficulty thinking or gait freezing does not respond to dbs therapy so doctor is there any risk of doing dbs surgery like all pain surgeries deep brain stimulation surgery does carry a small risk of infection stroke bleeding or seizure dbs surgery may be associated with reduced clarity of speech or even slight changes in finding the right word a small number of people living with pd have experienced cognitive decline after dbs surgery this occurs most often in patient who already have some cognitive impairment prior to surgery what are the components of the dbs system so there are three components the lead which is inserted into the deep brain structures of the brain its extension wires and the neurostimulator which is kept outside below under the skin below the collar bone which brain targets should be used to implant the dbs lead there are two target choices which was approved by fda that is subthalamic nucleus and the globus pallidus interna are the most common site how long does the procedure of dbs surgery takes it takes 4 to 5 hours what is the frequency at which target organ are stimulated in dbs usually in in treatment of parkinson's disease high frequency dbs that is more than 100 hertz are recommended for the treatment of pd when does the effect of dbs start immediately after dbs surgery or later programming generally begins after a few weeks of dbs surgery at least 4 weeks after the surgery the device is turned on and therapeutic stimulation occurs symptom relief can take months meantime medication of the pd can be reduced does dbs permanently damage brain tissue the effects of deep brain stimulation are reversible and do not permanently damage the brain tissue what is the honeymoon period of pd the initial 5 years after the onset of motor symptom of pd is called as the first honeymoon period during this period patient respond well to medication with levodopa therapy after 5 years drug induced dyskinesia that is abnormal movements shaking off phenomena the drug does not work and side effects of medication occurs so if the patient undergo dbs which is done during this period that is after 5 years there is second honeymoon period in them as the dbs improves the motor symptoms tremor and bradykinesia 
and it prevent dyskinesia and patient remains on that is normal movement in most of the day around 80% of the day the patient re remains on and he can do his activities of daily living and he can go for his work how often a patient undergoing dbs surgery need to visit doctor initially 4 weeks after surgery programming is done where brain pacemaker device is turned on which is otherwise called as the ipg subsequently reprogramming is done after 3 months and the revisit every year or two if the pd patient require frequent reprogramming it indicates either dbs surgery is not done properly or the doctor who does programming did not do it well does the dbs device should be turned off during night no the device is turned on through all the day and night usually the adjustment and reprogramming is done only by the doctor that is a neurologist or neurosurgeon what precautions to be taken after undergoing dbs surgery person can lead a normal life he need to avoid exposure to high electromagnetic field region like mri room however with recent advances mri compatible dbs devices are available secondly while taking ecg the electrode has to be kept posterior as the pacemaker is kept below the left clavicle thirdly when a person goes through metal detector while entering the shopping mall they should show their card of dbs device so that they are devoid of metal detector fourthly while undergoing other surgeries where a doctor need to stop bleeding from blood vessels by cauterization they need to avoid monopolar diathermy in patient with dbs which is an electric current in such circumstances bipolar diathermy is safe in patient with dbs device can a person undergo mri study while on dbs device or brain pacemaker mri is usually avoided in patient with dbs device as most of the devices are mri non competitive but there are mri compatible device too hence a person need to discuss regarding the same with their neurologist or neurosurgeon before going for mri can a person with tbs device use electronic devices like cell phone fridge or iron box yes they can use it safely only precaution taken while undergoing other surgeries as i already mentioned bipolar diathermy should be preferred to arrest bleeding what are the things a patient with dbs device should avoid avoid a metal detector test at shopping mall or at at a high security zone need to show that device card avoid mri scan so doctor overall what does dbs do in patients with pd dbs surgery provide a person to forget that he is a patient of parkinson's disease it helps to lead an independent life self care driving going to his work without any dyskinesia without any medication related side effects it provides a quality living from 2 hours to 14 to 18 hours of the day thus providing second honeymoon period in patient's life thank you dr sandhya for shedding light on the transformative potential of deep brain stimulation in parkinson's disease to our listeners i hope this information can be valuable for the listeners to know more about the importance of deep brain stimulation in patients with parkinson's disease if any of you have any further questions regarding deep brain stimulation in pd patients please don't hesitate to consult a neurologist and remember advancements in medical science continue to pave the way for improved treatments and quality of life for parkinson's patient we will be back soon with another episode on pace hospitals podcast Until next time stay informed stay connected and keep seeking knowledge and support thank you